Hello, I'm Jacqueline Widmar Stewart, and I'm on a quest to understand why my grandparents fled Europe. In this inquiry, I'm relying primarily on law, linguistics, archaeology, and my own eyes. Once I realized how flawed the victor's version of history is, I've been searching further back in time for answers. In writing my earlier books, I came to realize that the role of women has been suppressed and attempts have been made to erase women from European history. In arts, in science, in literature, I went back to see if there were an earlier time when this was not the case, and I found it. Women lost their rights when Rome invaded Europe. I found that in Celtic Europe, that spanned from today's British Isles into Turkey, that women were not suppressed, that they were venerated, that they were honored alongside their men, that they were leaders, and yes, they were warriors. To document this quest, I've written four books in the Hidden Women series that focus on Celtic Europe. This fifth book in the series, Legacies from a Free Celtic Europe, will be published this spring. Thus far, I've written eight books and produced 24 short films free on YouTube. Three of my books have been published in Europe. Finding Slovenia is in its seventh printing. Let's go to the substance now. I'm going to be very frank and direct with my comments, so I regret any offense I might cause. While this is not an easy subject, it is vitally important. My takeaway for you today is threefold, and it rests on the differences between Celts and Romans. An advanced Celtic culture honored both its men and women, and this prevailed all across Europe before conquerors invaded. Roman invaders subjugated these people and imposed their laws that made women the property of men. Later, the church state incorporated these abuses into law and doctrine. Here's the good news. The world can regain the ancient equilibrium between men and women by reinstating Celtic ideals. How can we undo the damage that's been done to women by conquests and invasions? Let's go from the beginning. Mothers. Mothers are the gateway to the human continuum. Mothers grow and nourish their children with their own bodies, which means that women can sustain their children in ways that men cannot. The mother has been crucial to family survival because of her unique ability to feed her children. Even early cave drawings reflect the ancient reverence that has been reserved for mothers. Experts often interpret drawings of women nursing children or women with multiple breasts as worship of a fertility goddess. I would urge a broader view, one that honors women as the pillar of the family, the foundation of humanity itself. Here's why. The mother protects her children. It's instinctive in tigers, it's instinctive in humans. Even a gentle mother deer will turn fierce if you come too close to her fawn. Isn't that why women are naturally warriors? Because they are naturally protective of their children. Because of their vital role, mothers have been highly venerated. Women used to have the same rights as men and were honored as heroes alongside the men in the Iron Age before the Romans arrived. What went awry? Why have women been vilified and men glorified? The answer becomes apparent by looking at religion as a belief system, but also as a male authoritarian system that venerates men while disparaging women. 
when the Roman Empire invaded and occupied Celtic lands, the Romans imposed their laws and those laws subjugated women. Women became chattel, property to be owned and traded by men. Later, the church state taught that women are inferior to men and that women must be subservient to men. Those ideas still dominate today. We see from Iron Age traces that this disparagement of women was not part of the pre-Christian world. Celts had a common culture across Europe before the Christian era, and it flourished with technology, communication, art, science, and trade. Women had an equal place with men. In order to return to the Celtic equilibrium, we need to return to the world that existed before the church-state conquest. How do we do that? The takeover must be reversed. The Celtic past provides answers. First, religion imposes male authoritarianism and restricts freedom based on gender. What to do? Restore freedom for all, regardless of gender. The difference between pre-Christian and Christian Europe can be seen vividly through the difference in their treatment of women. Religion denigrates women in Europe through the art, literature, rewriting history, suppressing knowledge, and controlling the narrative. Christian art shows women as subservient, heads bowed, eyes down, which is diametrically opposed to the Celtic veneration of their female heroes. Celts portray their women with heads, eyes, and arms up, clad in golden gowns, wearing golden diadems. Equal rights for women must be written back into law. Second, Religion asserted itself as family. What to do? Honor science above myth. Dividing the family is an effective divide and conquer strategy that has been used by attackers since Caesar. To strike at the very core of Celtic society, religion usurps and divides the family. Religion pits grandparent against child child against parent. Words reflect this takeover. Biologically, a child can have only one father, yet most religions command worship of a pretend and unseen master called father. Sister, brother, father, mother, twisting these words in relationships elevates religion above family and demeans women. How to undo this? Use science and law to distinguish fact from fiction. Your real father is your only father. Third, women became men's property. What to do? Give women back their equality with men. The Celtic veneration of women changed when the Romans brought slavery to Europe. Women had no rights to own property or to inherit property. We must reinstate women as full owners of themselves and their possessions. Fourth, rape and sexual abuse have been downplayed as part of war and endorsed by religion. What to do? Hold sexual attackers to account, whether under the flag of religion or not. Slaughter and rape of women is a key part of divide and conquer tactics. When men use women as unwilling vessels for their seed, women are denigrated to chattel, to men's property without rights of their own. Rape tapes propagation away from the protection of the family structure. We need to punish rapists instead of their victims. Fifth, religion destroyed evidence of the women's role. What to do? Restore Celtic memorials to women. Technology now connects the advent of Christianity with the assault on even the likenesses of women. 
That suggests that removals and beheadings of female statuary has been part of the Christian conquest. These tributes should be reconstructed as part of Europe's cultural legacy. Sixth, public coffers subsidize religious authoritarianism and abuse of women. What to do? Remove tax exemptions for religions. When religions discriminate against women, they do not serve the general good. When religions discriminate against women, they should not be tax exempt. Otherwise, that amounts to the government subsidizing discrimination. Taxes collected from religious institutions that discriminate against women should be used for the public good. Seventh, religions knowingly spread disinformation about women. What to do? Hold religions accountable for damages incurred due to intentional disinformation spread. Most religions are male-dominated, authoritarian, and purportedly serve a male master. If the master tells men to kill heretics, they do it. Untold thousands of women perished at the hands of men for 1,400 years under heresy laws. Crimes against women largely have gone unpunished. There's no reason that the standard legal doctrine of estoppel should not apply to religions. There's no reason to exempt religions for the direct consequences of their actions. Estoppel requires that individuals be liable for their deliberate misinformation if others suffer tangible harm as a result. Religion must compensate those it harms. Eighth, religion overtook the Celtic fest halls that used to be community centers for celebration, open to all regardless of religion. What to do? Restore free and open fest halls. The old Celtic heroes halls honored male and female heroes by placing their likenesses in halls to memorialize them. Religion overtook these halls and claimed the heroes as their saints. These memorials need to be recognized as Celtic, not as religious. Religion has changed places of joyous Celtic celebrations into morgues of death threats. In some ancient Celtic fest halls that have been overtaken as churches, it's still possible to detect the former use as fest halls. Bright colored murals show women with their foot on a serpent set. Some statuary of women dancing and singing remains in alcoves of remote fest halls. These symbols of hope contrast starkly with cult of death motifs. One striking example is what we take to be a Celtic veneration of a woman with a joyous face. She's standing under an arch, which is likely a sign of veneration itself. The jarring sight of fire at her feet and a sword through her neck were absolutely added at the Christian takeover when she was overtaken as a martyr. This blatant example of the attack against women is disturbing to see, especially for children. The repugnancy of seeing a woman displayed in this way emphasizes the urgency of reversing religion's attacks on women. We must convert churches back into upbeat places for festivities, free and open for all without the cult of death overlay. What has happened in Europe 
emblematizes what has happened all over the world. In conclusion, I ask that you acknowledge male-dominated authoritarian systems, including most religions, for their harmful effects on women. And remember that this was not always the case. Let's reinstate the equilibrium of ancestral Europe in the times before conquerors invaded. Let's restore women to their reasonable place in our world for everyone's sake. Thank you.